continue with the previous series of "Becoming" by Michelle Obama, Part Three, "Becoming More," Chapter Nineteen. Conscious of being the first Black president and the first lady, the Obamas are extra careful about appearances during the transition. For example, Barack insists they pay their White House moving costs out of their own pocket. Instead of using allocated federal funds, departing President Bush ensures that the handoff between administrations is as smooth as possible. While First Lady Laura Bush makes Michelle feel welcome during a tour of the Obamas' new home, faced with hundreds of decisions related to the upcoming inaugural celebration and to White House. Decor. Michelle delegates what she can and hires help as needed. Michelle is glad to have the vice president's family around, because the Biden grandkids have become great friends with Malia and Sasha, and Michelle herself feels close to Joe Biden. Determined to help struggling military families like those she met on the campaign trail, Michelle she knows she will have an ally in jail since the Biden son Bo is serving in Iraq with the National Guard. Se- Secret Service protection changes Obama's life drastically. The president always travels with a twenty-car motorcade. And agents accompany Malia and Sasha to their new schools. Only Michelle's mother, persuaded to move to Washington for the sake of the girls, will live somewhat like an ordinary citizen for the next eight years. Declining Secret Service protection, she will slip in and out of the White House alone, as she, as she pleases. On inauguration day. After the swearing-in ceremony and a two-hour parade in sub-freezing temperatures, Michelle and Barack make the rounds of ten different inaugural balls. At the end of the evening, just as a private White House party for a couple of hundred friends is getting started, an exhausted Michelle has reached her limit. When Barack tells her it's okay. She flees upstairs and into her strange new bed. Chapter Twenty: The goal of the White House operation is to make life easy for the for the president. Barack has aides for everything from briefing books to shoe shining, and because he now lives within walking distance of his office, he starts being on time for dinner. However, White House life is is expensive. Because while the first family does not pay rent or staff salaries, it does pay for all food and consumable supplies. The resident staff are kind and discreetly efficient. Many of them like to visit with Michelle's mother in her quarters on the floor above the main residence. Michelle and Barack make sure that the girls feel at home while remembering to be respectful to everyone. Arranging get-togethers with school friends involves complicated logistics, but the visiting kids quickly learn to forget about where they are. Their frustrations. Michelle finds Republic- Republicans needlessly hostile during Barack's first speech before Congress. A short while later, during an official visit to Great Britain, Michelle causes a minor scandal by hugging the Queen, who, however, appears not to have minded at all. The next day, at a London girls' school where nearly all the students are working class and dark-skinned, Michelle is filled with emotion and hugs every girl she can. Michelle decides that as first lady, she wants to promote healthy eating. Sam Cass, now on the White House staff, secures a plot on the South Lawn for planting herbs and vegetables. Michelle finds peace in digging in the dirt alongside local schoolchildren. After the seeds are planted, she and Sam must wait and trust that something good will come up. Chapter Twenty One. Michelle and Barack get away for dinner and a show in New York. 
But while the evening is lovely, Michelle is self-conscious about the disruptions they cause everywhere they go. Subsequent public criticism of the trip over its cost to taxpayers reinforces Michelle's sense that she can't do anything spontaneous. Even stepping onto her balcony requires security measures. Michelle accepts that she and Barack must live with this constraint, but she insists that the Secret Service find a way for the girls to accept invitations from friends on short notice. While Michelle's wardrobe is concerned, an aide helps Michelle showcase American designers mixing upscale items with affordable ones. A hairdresser and makeup artist complete the trifecta of people who help her meet the expectations people have for women in public life. Barack, Michelle can't help but notice, can put on a dark suit and be ready for work without even combing his hair. Every choice Michelle makes requires political calculation. Planning for a children's Halloween party involves debate about the optics during an economic recession. Hillary Clinton, now Secretary of State, shares with Michelle her experience with stepping beyond the range of activities deemed appropriate for the First Lady. As Michelle decides what causes. To champion during her time in the White House, she must be careful to come across as more than just mom in chief, but not as a strident and political. The first cause Michelle settles on is childhood obesity, increasingly recognized as a major public health problem. After careful groundwork to win the support of business and advocacy group. She and her team launched the Let's Move initiative to promote exercise and healthy eating. Chapter twenty-two: The Obamas are often called upon to respond to disasters and suffering. After the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico is contained, the family takes a Florida beach vacation to reassure people that the ocean is safe to swim in. When an earthquake devastated Haiti, Michelle and Jill Biden go to comfort survivors. Michelle regularly visits with wounded veterans and their families at Walter Reed Medical Center. The Let's Move initiative leads to improvements in school cafeteria diets and a pledge by Walmart to offer healthier food products. Passage of a child nutrition bill pr- promises to further improve what children eat at school. Michelle and Joe Biden launch an effort called Joining Forces to provide more support to military families. For Barack, meanwhile, child nutrition and the needs of military families are just two of many concerns that keep him up late at night. Safety is a constant worry. Especially after real estate developer Donald J. Trump starts promoting the idea that Barack is not a U.S. citizen, someone fires several rifle rounds at the White House. Michelle and the girls try to live their lives as normally as possible, which for Sasha and Melia means sports, and for Michelle means an occasional incognito trip to Target, or to PetSmart with their dog Bo. The agents who protect the Obamas become overtime good friends. Michelle stays in touch with her roots by starting a leadership and mentoring program to provide girls in hard circumstances with the kind of adult guidance she was given as a girl. At Camp David in Maryland, Michelle starts hosting an annual fitness boot camp for close friends. Meanwhile, one of Barack's nighttime worries is over. A team sent to kill Osama bin Laden completes the mission with no casualties. Chapter twenty-three. Even though Michelle knows she's considered popular, she continues to feel the pressure of being the first black first lady. She wants to do whatever she can to help Barack win re-election in twelve twenty-twelve. 
in the face of cynical oppositions from Republicans in Congress. First, however, she heads to Africa for a tour that includes inspiring meetings with Archbishop Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela in the fall. Michelle works to continue the progress of the Let's Move initiative. Teams up with Joe Biden to remodel a disabled veteran's home and discovers the power of social media. Her first tweet is to promote joining forces. Over the coming years, Barack stays only barely ahead of his Republican opponents. Mitten Romney in the polls and performs poorly in the first televised fall debate. On election night, Michelle deliberately tunes out of the news and therefore is too slow to learn that Barack has won again. Five weeks later, when a shooter at Sandy Hook School in Newton, Connecticut, kills 26 children and staff, Michelle is too shaken to join Barack. At an on-site prayer vigil, when shortly after Barack's second inauguration, a girl from Chicago's South Side is killed in a drive-by shooting, Michelle feels it is time for her to step up. The girl who had just performed with her school band at Barack's second inaugural was a smart, ambitious youngster, just like Michelle years ago. Michelle attends the funeral and speaks with the girl's parents. Months later, she has an honest conversation with a group of Southside students, who tell her that sometimes the middle of the street is literally the safest place to be when walking to school. She tells them that Washington is not going to help with the gang violence problem, and that education is their hope of a better life. Michelle's new Reach Higher initiative seeks to encourage young people to attend college. Chapter Twenty Four: The Obamas continue trying to keep their girls' life as normal as possible. Michelle's staff regularly ask gossip website to take down pictures of the girls, Bo and a happy new puppy, Sunny. Become the family's go-to ambassadors at White House publicity shoots. When Malia starts visiting prospective college, Michelle learns to send her assistant as escort instead of coming along herself. Sadly, the world continues to be a violent place. Several deaths of young black men at the hands of police make national news. After a young white man kills nine black worshippers at a church in Charleston, South California, Barack leads the mourning congregation in signing "Amazing Grace." There are happy occasions as well. However, when the Supreme Court affirms the right to same-sex marriage and the White House celebrates with rainbow lighting, Michelle and Malia sneak outside to enjoy the spectacle. As the 2016 presidential race gets underway, the Obamas makes their most of their remaining time in the White House. Together, they work on their Let's Girls Learn initiative, which seeks to increase access to education for adolescent girls around the world. Michelle promotes the efforts by enlisting the help of entertainment celebrities. And by TV appearances with the likes of Stephen Colbert and James Corden, during a final visit to the United Kingdom, the Queen knows that she cares about protocol much less than her staff does. Michelle is appalled at Donald Trump's bullying conduct in the past and during the campaign. She speaks on Hillary Clinton's behalf at the Democratic convention. Offering when they go low, we go high as a model. On election night, she's optimistic that Hillary, with a polling lead, will win. The Obamas and their staff are dismayed when Trump wins, but Michelle takes comfort in all the things accomplished over the last eight years. For her, the multiracial cast of Hamilton. A new musical about Americans' funding 
illustrate how far the country has come. Epilogue: Leaving the White House is painful for the Obama family, as they say goodbye to the many people who have looked after them for the last eight years. At Trump's inauguration, Michelle sees the new president's overwhelmingly white and male assembly of guests, and after a while, stops trying to smile. She does not plan to run for office. She is still in the process of becoming what she will be next, and she takes hope from all the things she and Barack have accomplished over the previous eight years. And that's a wrap of the becoming by Michelle Obama. I hope you enjoy this reading, and look forward to see you in the next book.